must exchange materials and energy with its environment, and this exchange occurs at a cellular level. However, diffusion alone would not supply organs and muscles with appropriate amounts of nutrients. The circulatory system solves this problem. The circulatory system transports fluid in bulk through tubes in the body and connects the aqueous environment of body cells to organs that exchange gases, absorb nutrients, and dispose of wastes. Invertebrate circulation. Hydras and other nadarians have relatively simple body plans, and they have a body that is only two cells thick, which encloses the gastrovascular cavity. The fluid in this cavity is continuous with the outside environment. Thin branches of the gastrovascular tissue extend into the tentacles. Since the hydra is only two cells thick, diffusion takes place over a short distance. Planarians and flatworms also have gastrovascular cavities that exchange materials with the environment. In most complex animals, a gastrovascular cavity is insufficient and they have circulatory systems made up of blood, blood vessels, and a heart. The heart uses the hydrostatic pressure of the blood, which flows down a concentration gradient through its circuit and then flows back to the heart. This force is also known as blood pressure. Most insects, arthropods, and mollusks have an open circulatory system in which blood directly surrounds organs and is not distinct from the interstitial fluid. The heart pumps this fluid, called hemolymph, through a system of sinuses, or spaces around organs, allowing for chemical exchange. When the tubular heart contracts, it pumps hemolymph through vessels and out into the sinuses. In a closed circulatory system, Blood is confined to vessels and is distinct from the interstitial fluid. Many animals with a closed circulatory system have more than one heart. Advantages of the open circulatory system include lower hydrostatic pressure, which is less costly in terms of energy expenditure. It, is, it requires less energy to maintain because it lacks an extensive vessel system and it can have a variety of functions, such as a hydrostatic skeleton. Advantages of the closed circulatory system include high blood pressure, which is more effective at transporting materials to meet high me metabolic demands of vertebrates. Let's take a survey of vertebrate circulation. The cardiovascular system is another way to refer to the closed circulatory system in vertebrates. Vertebrate hearts have atria, chambers that receive blood, and ventricles, chambers that pump blood out of the heart. Arteries carry blood away from the heart and branch into arterioles, which then branch into smaller capillaries. Networks of thread known as capillary beds surround organs and provide great surface area for gas exchange by diffusion. Capillaries converge into venules, which then converge into veins, which continue back to the atria. A way to remember the difference between arteries and veins is that arteries carry blood away from the heart and veins carry blood to the heart because the V may go, makes the top of an arrow sign which points to the heart. Vertebrate circulatory systems have been modified by natural selection. Fishes have a two-chambered heart with a single circuit of flow. Gill circulation is when blood from the heart goes to the gills first and disposes of carbon dioxide and receives oxygen. In systemic circulation, the oxygen is given to the other parts through capillaries. Amphibians have a three-chambered heart and two circuits of blood flow, the pulmon, cutaneous, and systemic circuit. Some of oxygen-rich and oxygen-poor blood mixes in the single ventricle. The pulmon cutaneous circuit leads to organs and supplies oxygens and removes carbon dioxide. The systemic circuit leads to the lungs and skin for gas exchange. This is known as a double circuit. Reptiles, except for birds, have a three-chambered heart. However, the septum partially divides the ventricle, reducing blood mixing. They have a pulmonary circuit, 
which leads to the lungs. Mammals and birds have four chambered hearts that completely segregate oxygen-rich blood from oxygen-poor blood. A four-chambered heart is essential for endotherms. Double circulation in mammals depends on the anatomy and pumping cycle of the heart. In the mammalian circulatory system, blood starts in the right ventricle and is pumped into the pulmonary arteries where it meets the lungs. In the lungs, it picks up oxygen-rich blood and then continues back to the left atrium and then is pumped into the left ventricle, which pumps the oxygen-rich blood into the aorta, which then divides and either goes to the arms or the legs. After releasing oxygen in the arms or legs, the capillaries converge into vena cava, which then continue back to the heart to the right atrium, where blood is then pumped into the right ventricle and the cycle repeats again. Let's take a closer look at the mammalian heart. The human heart is about the size of a clenched fist. Ventricles have thicker walls, especially the left one. The cardiac cycle refers to one complete sequence of the pumping and filling of the heart. Systole refers to the contraction phase and diastole refers to the relaxation phase. Cardiac output is the volume of blood per minute that the left ventricle pumps into the systemic circuit. This depends on the rate of contraction, heart rate, and the amount of blood pumped by the left ventricle in each contraction, stroke volume. Valves in the heart prevent backflow. The atrioventricular, or AV valve, is between each atrium and ventricle. It keeps blood from flowing back in the atria. The semilunar valves are located at the two exits of the heart where the aorta leaves the left ventricle and where the pulmonary artery leaves the right ventricle. Pulse is the rhythmic stretching of arteries caused by pressure of the blood driven by powerful rhythmic contraction of ventricles. It is used to measure heart rate. A heart murmur is a defect in heart which is detected by a hissing sound when a stream of blood squirts backwards through the valve. Maintaining the heart's rhythmic beat. Cardiac muscles are self-excitable and they have their own intrinsic rhythm. A region of the heart called the sinotrial or SA node or pacemaker sets the rate and timing at which all cardiac muscles contract. The vertebrae heart is referred to as a myogenic heart because it is composed of specialized muscle tissues. In contrast, hearts of arthropods originate in motor nerves arising from the outside, an arrangement called a neurogenic heart. Impulses from the SA node spread rapidly through the walls of the atria, causing both atria to contract in union. The impulses also pass to another region of specialized cardiac tissue, a relay point called the atrioventricular AV node. Here, impulses are delayed for a tenth of a second before spreading to the walls of the ventricles. The impulses that travel through cardiac muscle during the heart cycle produce electrical currents that are conducted through body fluids to the skin, where currents can be detected by electrodes and recorded as an electri electrocardiogram, or EKG. Two sets of nerves affect heart rate. One slows it down and the other speeds it up. Heart rate increases during fever, exercise, and during fight or flight response from epinephrine. This is an adaptation that enables the circulatory system to provide additional oxygen to muscles at work.